the content of the interview. Miss California, will you step over here and we'll have a little private chat before about 60 million people. Only 60 million, huh? That little outburst of applause would indicate that they think that uh, you are uh, in the right place among our 12 semifinalists. You're Linda Fogarty, 19, of Fullerton. Yes. And you were attending Fullerton Community College, but mm -hmm. you left school during the last semester. Why did you do that? I left school because I was offered an opportunity to go to Asia, doing a promotional tour for Pan Am. What have you done as Miss California? Well, as Miss California, I've attended many, many, oh, interviews and all kinds of evening press parties. I was in Hong Kong doing promotional work, and I met all kinds of people, and I'm having a fantastic time. That's good. Now, are you going to continue your education? Oh, definitely. What do you want to do? I'd like to study psychodrama. I think that would be fine. Now, what will you do uh, with a degree in psychodrama? Uh, with a degree in psychodrama, I will work with autistic children. Good for you. Now, I'd like to ask you something really serious. Okay. Do you like grits? Oh, I just tried grits for the first time this morning. I was very hesitant about trying them, and I like them. They're very good. I like grits. I really do. Of course, I'll say anything to get applause. <laughs> no, I do. In fact, at the hotel, they're going to send a suitcase full of grits home with me. I've eaten so much. Thank you, Miss California. Thank you. Now, watch your television screens, and you'll see her composite score. Now that we have seen it, we are ready to talk with Miss Massachusetts. Would you come out here to me? Monica Magnus. She's from Boston. She's a graduate of Emerson College, and many of the girls in the pageant aspire to be models. But Monica here has worked as a professional model in Paris, probably the fashion capital of the world. Monica, what uh, houses did you work for in Paris? Oh, I worked for Saint Laurent, for Givenchy, for Christian Ojar, and a few others. Now, these girls, as I say, are many of them are interested in becoming models. What is the life of a model really like? Just describe it. Well, Bob, it's a lot difficult than people expect. First of all, it's, it is a nine to five job. You have to be up very early in the morning, making rounds, seeing people, and you have to keep in touch with people, Bob. You have to constantly update your portfolio and always be on your guard. Be the best that you can be at all times. Well, that's good in anything. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, you have also worked in a daycare center. Yes, I have, and that was one of, one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. I had one student uh, named Keith, he would give me a hard time every day, Bob, and I'd go home and try to figure out what I was doing wrong. One day his mother said to me, you know, my little boy has a crush on you. And that really made me feel good because I tried to show all of my students that I love them very much. He liked you, so he's trying to get your attention by misbehaving. Would you like to say something to Keith? He may be watching there at home. Hi, Keith, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's glad you're at home and not here. <laughs> Probably not if you liked him that much. I'll say something to Keith. Keith, immediately after the show, we want you to go to bed. Thank you, Miss Massachusetts. Thank you. Have a look at her score. And we have seen it, and we want to talk with Miss Arizona. Miss Arizona is Anna Marie Rubert. She's 21. She lives in Scottsdale. She is attending the University of Arizona. And what are you studying? I'm an English major and a finance minor. And what would you like to do someday? Someday, soon I hope, I hope to go into broadcasting. Oh, really? Yes. That's why you're studying finance. <laughs> you think that we make so much money doing this that you are going to need a finance degree to invest in. Is that it? I wanted to cover a lot of ground. <laughs> well, if you uh, go into broadcasting, what do you want to do? Well, I'd like to go into newscasting or um, some kind of commentating. I'm going to allow you to become a CBS correspondent. You are here on the Gulf Coast. Out yonder is Scottsdale. Tell the folks what's happening on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Well, being from Arizona, of course, it's a real experience for me to be here on the Gulf no, Coast. No, no, I want to report. Oh. I don't want to, you cannot no personalize on okay. CBS News. Okay. Um, as you say, it's the beauty capital of the world here right now. We have a pageant going on. There's a lot of pressure going on here and a lot of anxieties built up to a great degree, and we're going to see in a few hours just how this all turns out. 
Look out, Walter Cronkite. Here she comes. Thank you, Lady Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see her score and go on and talk with Miss Washington, who is Tracy Goddard, 19, of Seattle, a student at Edmonds Community College. And what are your career aims, Tracy? Well, I have about two or three career aims. First, I would like to go into fashion. I have considered modeling and other areas. I want to decide first and try out each of them before I would pursue it. And also, which isn't exactly a career ambition, but one of my greatest ambitions is to go to Spain and to learn about the people there because I have studied Spain and its history. Oh, you have? Yes. Do you speak Spanish? Si. <laughs> Would you like to show off some Spanish? Uh, how do you like the Gulf Coast? Uh, me gusto mucho. Si? Uh, how do you like Southern hospitality? Me gusto mucho. <laughs> how do you like Southern gentlemen? Oh, mucho me gusto. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Washington. You speak Spanish fluently. Me gusta mucho means that she likes you a lot, in case you don't speak Spanish. But if you don't speak Spanish at all, I could help you more. Taco, burrito, there are a lot of things. Miss New York, would you come over here to me? Mary Therese Friel is 20. She lives in Rochester. She is a student at St. John Fisher College. And you have heard, perhaps, in interviews or you've read, that the pageant is an educational experience for the girls. It was the pageant that made it possible for Miss New York to visit New York City for the first time, was it not? Yes, it was. I'm sometimes embarrassed to say that because usually when you say you live in New York, everybody thinks of the Big Apple. But the biggest thrill I've had so far, besides being in Mississippi, is experience New York City firsthand. And we got to go to a Broadway show, and we got to be picked up by uh, uh, King Kong at the Empire State Building with a press man dressed you up. You went to a, base, a baseball game. And a baseball game where the Mets and Yankees played for the Mayor's Cup. Do you know how I know that? Yes. I saw your picture on the bulletin board with one of the New York Mets. Yeah, that was Which, Lee Mazzilli. Yeah, yeah. Has uh, he asked you out? Has romance blossomed? Well, I've been a little too busy for it, but he has called a couple of times and wished me good luck. Is, is he and are the Mets watching the ball game, to, or watching the uh, pass? <laughs> <laughs> yes, where's the ball game? Where is the ball game? Which monitor is it on? Are the Mets watching the pageant? Well, he said that they would be playing tonight, but they would be putting it on Betamax. I hope they get a chance to see it. You know, the way the Mets have been going, they could watch the pageant and play just about as well as they've been playing. Um, I shouldn't say that. You know what'll happen. They'll go on, they'll win the pennant, they'll get in the series, and I won't be able to get tickets. I apologize. I apologize. Thank you, Miss New York. Have a look at Miss New York's score. And we're ready for Miss Illinois, who is Debbie Nigo, 20 years old, from Oak Lawn. And how about it, Miss Illinois? Was your family excited about you winning the title, Miss Illinois? They sure were. And you know, my, I have a little brother who's in fourth grade. His name is Ronnie, and he's here tonight. And he's probably going to crawl under the seat when I tell you this. But the week after I won my state pageant, we found out that he had been telling his teacher at school that he was going on appearances with me and he was out late at night with my parents and I and that he just could not get to his homework. You know, he was just out too late. <laughs> <laughs> and he was getting away with it. <laughs> if, if you become Miss USA, he may have to lay out for a whole year. <laughs> uh, he'd love that. <laughs> there is a, uh, a Miss Illinois of uh, 76, is that right? Who That's was a, right. a friend of yours? Yes, Kathy Schmalen. She's a, one of my best friends. She was Miss Illinois in 1976 and we're from the same town we went to school together and she's here tonight she surprised me by coming in on Saturday night she give you any advice as to what you should do if you became a semifinalist yes she did you know and she told me if I made the semifinals as she did that I should come up here and have a lot of fun with Bob Barker <laughs> is that what she said word for word <laughs> come up and have a lot of fun with Bob Barker I think that's marvelous advice for any pretty girl in the country. Have fun with Bob Barr. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, Miss Illinois. <laughs> Let's see what the judges have for Miss Illinois. 
Very well. Those are the first six of our semifinalists. One of the we are going to talk with Miss Mississippi. Come up here beside me. She is Lori Kimbrough, 22. She lives in Oxford. And uh, Laurie is a social worker, and I am told that one of your responsibilities as a social worker is marriage counseling. Exactly. Well, that must be very interesting. What sort of problems have you dealt with? <laughs> well, I had one couple who worked together during the day as painters, and they didn't like spending that much time together. You mean the family that paints together <laughs> does not necessarily stay together? Exactly. What did you tell them? Well, we worked on their communication skills and how they would handle their problems and how to talk about them. I have, I'll tell you what, we will help all the folks watching and the people in this audience. I have read that one of the basic problems in marriage is money. How many men in the audience have argued with your wife at one time or another about money? Just raise your hands. A sea of hands, as you can see. Now, who do you think should control the money in the family, the husband or the wife? Both should act as a team. And you're right in, in saying that money is one of the most important factors. And they should talk it over. That sounds like a marriage counselor cop-out to me, Miss Mississippi. <laughs> Tell me now, as Miss Mississippi, I'm sure that you would like to let the country know about the glories of your state. Here we are in Mississippi. What should we know about it? Oh, that we have a great bunch of beautiful people here. We have rural countryside. If you want to relax, come on down to Mississippi and have a good time. I like your choice of words. Come on down. Thank you, Miss Mississippi. Miss Virginia. Miss Virginia is Betsy Bott of Falls Church. And uh, I tell you, these uh, uh, girls, she's a financial consultant. Surprised? Now, that must be an interesting job. What do you do as a financial consultant? Well, you were talking a while ago about money. Well, I would be happy to take the money that all the people here in Mississippi have because actually before I came down, um, I was, of course, working very steadily in McLean, Virginia with New York Life. And as a financial consultant, I was working in educational plans for college students and savings plans for retirement and that sort of thing. And my manager insisted that I try to get my Mississippi state license before I came down so that I could sell insurance to all the people in Mississippi and the girls, but so far I just haven't had time. Sorry, folks. <laughs> During commercials, she'll pass among you with life insurance policies. Thank you, Miss Virginia. Thank you. And at home, you will see Miss Virginia's score. And I shall talk with Miss Hawaii. Miss Hawaii is Lealoha Ma, 20, of the island of Oahu, and she attends the University of Hawaii. And what do you study? I'm not a declared major yet, but I like to get into communications and business management. What would you like to do uh, eventually? Eventually, I'd like to own my own business. I very have high aspirations for myself. I think that would be fine. <laughs> and do you, uh, several, of the, several of the girls, have... Uh, some of their family here. Do you have uh, family here? Yes, I do. I have a mother here and my grandmother, which I don't know where they are, but I want to say hi. I love you both. Your grandmother? That's a long yes. trip for your grandmother. Very long, very long. But she loves to travel. And she likes to go. So she's here and I love her for coming. Well, I think that it's fine to have your grandmother and your mother here. And uh, in, I assume that you're a hula dancer. And uh, I mean, if you live in Hawaii, you must do the hula. What how do you say, you're about to go back, how do you say, how does a Hawaiian hula dancer say goodbye with her hands? She goes something like this. I love you all. Just like Hollywood and Bond. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Hawaii. And Miss Texas is Ann Hennant. She's 19. She lives in Houston. Another surprise for you, I will wager, she's studying geology at Trinity University. Are there many girls in your geology class? Uh, Bob, you'd be surprised there are. There's ha about half and half. Oh, is there really? Yes, there is. Yes. I studied uh, some geology when I was in college. And well, look what I've ended up with. The only thing I can, if you throw rocks, I know what kind they are. That's about it. Um, well, I find this subject very interesting, and I really enjoy studying it. 
Um, I haven't decided what field or what direction I'll go with it, but right now I have two more years left, so I'm just considering a lot of different directions. Uh, you are the one, you're not the only beauty contest winner in your family, are you? No, I'm not. I have a sister here who's also going to be a finalist in a state pageant, and she's here tonight along with the rest of my family and a lot of close friends. But didn't you have a grandmother who won a, a beauty pageant? Yes, she was. She was the most beautiful woman at A&M. Uh, about 19. Well, I better not tell you the year. She's here, too. <laughs> Whisper in my ear. 1888, I can't believe that. No, I think no, you're I kidding me. Get back there where you belong, Miss Texas. You're putting me on. <laughs> Miss Texas is four. And Miss Wisconsin. Miss Wisconsin is Catherine Wittishek, 23, of Milwaukee. Catherine has a couple things to say. Oh, I don't get a chance to ask a question very well. Go ahead. What? First of all, I'm from Wisconsin. My last name is Wittishek, and I have been last for everything. So I've made a decision. I'm going to move to Alabama and marry a Barker and be first for a change. Well, <laughs> I think that's a fine idea, and there's some lucky Barker in Alabama. If you sure do there just is. exactly that. I started to point out that, the, that you manage and are the dietitian at a health spa, aren't That's you? That's right, and they're all watching tonight. Are they? Yes, they are. You have both men and women at the spa? We sure do. What ages? We have them from 18 to 86 years of age. 86? 86. Is it a lady or a gentleman who's it's 86? It's a gentleman, Paul Vogel, and he is in great shape, and he's watching what tonight, too. What sort of too. exercises does Paul do at 86? Well, actually, he comes in and sings a lot of love songs to the instructors. <laughs> Keeps him really young. <laughs> Would you like to say hello to, to Paul? Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Watch your blood pressure, Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Wisconsin. We're ready for Miss North Carolina now. Miss North Carolina is Diane Jamerson. She lives in Asheville. She's an assistant advertising director, and I have another surprise for you. Now, a lot of these girls have come in on all sorts of airlines from all parts of the country. How did you get to the Gulf Coast, Miss North Carolina? I hopped in my little plane that I rented, and I flew it down here and landed in the fantastic airport called Gulfport Biloxi. You flew your own plane down here. Now, how long have you been flying? How'd you get started? I have always wanted to fly all my life. There's a small little airport behind my house, a dirt strip called Emma International, and we, I have watched the pilots come and go, weekend pilots, all my life. I worked and worked and worked, and I saved my money, and I went and took my first flying lesson, and I haven't come down yet. Well, I think that's great. Would you like to be a professional pilot? I'm going to be a professional pilot, and I'll tell you something. All right, you tell when me. When you hear my voice come out over the intercom welcoming you to my flight, if the price is right, you can come into the cockpit and you can see the truth or consequences of your flight. Well, <laughs> All right. North Carolina. There you go. Just, just a moment. Just a moment. She insists on one more word here. I am a very optimistic person, but in case Win, lose, or draw this pageant. There's three things that's been fantastic. Number one is Mr. Barker. Number two is the fantastic people we've met and the experience I've had and will live through with my life. But more than that, this pageant has been held all over the country, but nowhere in the world could it be so fantastic as the people have made it and down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Thank you, Miss North Carolina. There you go. I tell you, she's going to be a Southern politician. And you have her score. Now you know all 12 of our semi